Episode 428, ladies and gentlemen, features former Tough Enough winner Josh Bredel. Live Q&A. Wow. It's going to be fun tonight, ladies and gentlemen. So get your questions ready because we're going to have a lot of fun as we do always. PMP 428. Let's go. BNP Nation, are you ready? Wrench Mob, are you ready? You know what time it is. Without further ado, let's go! Yeah, yeah! yeah, yeah, yeah. You already know what time it is. Time it is. It's that official time. When we take this worldwide. Let's go! Let's go! So now it's time to turn it up. Surf the radio waves as we begin to burn it up. We all up in the area like landscape. landscape. Definitely bringing you the power for the It's a, a mandate that you tune in. It's time to move out so we can move in and recognize that this is no illusion. I'm here to clear the air so that there is no confusion. It all started off in the book of Genesis when Jacob was wrestling with who he thought was his nemesis. And when the man saw he couldn't overpower him, he touched his hip, but he really couldn't devour him. And from that point, then we hear a name change, rearrange the game. So now we got to change. Lanes. Uh, so I'm here to let you know it's time to listen to the Pancake and Power Slam show. Let's go. Turn it up, turn it up. It's the Pancake and Power Slam. Turn it up, turn it up. It's the Pancake and Power Slam. Turn it up, turn it up. It's the Pancake and Power Slam show. Uh. Turn it up, turn it up. It's the Pancake and Power Slam. Turn it up, turn it up. It's the Pancake and Power Slam. Turn it up, turn it up. It's the Pancake and Power Slam show. Uh. Turn it up. Hey, 
episode 428 ladies and gentlemen this is the pancakes and pot slam show as always we are live in a living color getting funky like a monkey if you will baby yeah so here we go ladies and gentlemen we have a lot going on as always we're gonna have some fun a whole lot of fun as we always do uh looks like the pmp chat is ready to rock and roll we've got marissa we've got christopher We've got Brian who says, I have arrived. You may begin. <laughs> thank you for per- thank you for your permission, Marissa says. Uh, let's see. PMP Nation, what is going on? Antoine, what's up? What's up, Kyle? What's up, Antoine? We've got a lot of people going on ready to rock and roll. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I want to bring on my guy. Uh, I, you know, I'm really interested is to know like what's the what's the latest on this guy, man. It's it's been a while since he's been away from from WWE, and so I w- brought him in here tonight for q and A, Q&A, man. So it's going to be lots of fun. So without further ado, the the Yeti himself, ladies and gentlemen, Josh Bretto. How are you tonight, sir? Yo, hey, big dog. How you doing, bro? How you doing? Thanks for having me, <laughs> oh, bro. Man. How are you, man? Bro? It's, it's great to have you, man. I'm good. Cheers, it's man. Great to have you. How's life? Appreciate that, bro. Cheers to that. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, life's good right now, man. Yeah. It's been crazy, you know. Uh, like you just said, it's been it's been a while. I've been laying low, you know what I mean. When it came to the WWE universe and anybody involved with that, you know, uh, kind of like had to separate myself due to the way my career kind of ended. And uh, I mean, it was kind of I was laying low. I went back to Colorado for a while. Right, I'm from Denver, Colorado. So I went back to the Rockies for a while. I kind of hit okay. home base again. I had a son. I had a son. You know what I mean? I have a son named Mateo. He's turned three years old. So, I mean, that's, that even shows how much oh, wow. more time's passed, right? So uh, then uh, yeah. I was there for a while and uh, was raising the kids a bit. And then I got this opportunity to come out to L.A. So I came out here to L.A. and uh, basically uh, was offered the opportunity to use what I I studied in college for so I went to uh, college to play college football primarily, but I had to choose a major, right? So I, I wanted to mm-hmm. stick to this, you know, kind of sports performance, anything sport oriented. So I ended up studying kinesiology, exercise science. Mm-hmm. So I got a bachelor's wow. degree, kind of with no real plan, you know. Like I was brief, I was, I was briefly scooped up by the Green Bay Packers, and then once they switched me to O line, I fell out immediately, and I was like, kind of like mind boggled, like, dang, how can I not be, you know? at that end road where I had just like got a taste of and uh, all of a sudden I know where I kind of got like a catfish esque email, you know what I'm saying? Uh, talking about uh, this tough enough opportunity. And so that's kind of how that whole tough enough uh, story began. We can kind of go back down that road later, but yeah. after that whole tide came through, you know what I'm saying? During, during that uh, whole tough enough run, I actually came across uh, uh, my, my longtime friend now, Kirk Myers. Uh, I was one of his first clients back of the old uh, dog pound location mm-hmm. and uh, in, in New York. And like when I was on my tough enough run, I was in Manhattan for a while a couple of times. So I ended up linking up with him. I was a client to take care of me. I was taking care of him, have a really good re- relationship. And that relationship just stuck moving forward. It really never changed. We always kind of checked in with each other over the whole course of all this madness where I kind of went back on my little nation tour back to my hometown. And then he started to open this new location out here in LA. He hit me up, wanted to see if I wanted to come along for the ride and help him kind of erect this like new empire on the west coast and like we got it done bro like within the next couple months we were really like rolling in and moving in well with the whole neighborhood you know we're in west hollywood just fitting Mm -hmm. in like we've been there Mm -hmm. and uh it's something we're all pretty proud of and like it's been a way for me to kind of take my like personality that didn't necessarily get utilized and like implemented into like a new you know ecosystem where i can hopefully flourish and like grow into something new out there too so it's been like kind of like a Nice little like rebirth story for me. So I, nice. I've been excited. I'm blessed. You know what I'm saying? Like it's cool, bro. Nice. Congratulations, man. It's yeah. great. It's great yeah, to yeah. hear that. Man. Thanks, bro. Yeah, I appreciate that, bro. Yeah, it's it's uh you know that a lot of people, you know, wrestling it it's so consuming, you know, to to people, and it, it gets difficult to really, uh, yeah. to 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 really get rid of that itch and just really go to a whole different career, <laughs> but. Yeah, uh, no, for been, sure, bro. Yeah, it's been four years since you've uh, competed in the ring, man. So, uh, do you I miss know, it? At all? Yeah, and there's times I miss it. I miss like the I'm like for me the part that I like saw the art in and the I saw the love in is just like when you're out there working with somebody and you're really flowing, you're in your zone, just like you're in that flow state, just like any other sport when you're like a pro at your sport. 
Mm -hmm. You get in that flow state where you ain't thinking of the morning flow and it's working. And I started to see a glimpse of that. You know what I'm saying? I was brand new to the game, but I started seeing that. I miss that type of feeling like with sports, yeah, with football, with basketball, and obviously with WWE too. So I miss that that dynamic of it. I think any athlete that competed with anything will always miss that dynamic, right? That flow state. That's that's beautiful. That's euphoria. Like once you reach that, it's like that's that yeah. uh, kung fu master, you know, in your craft. Yeah, and yeah. So, uh, but I mean, but when it came to the politics and stuff, man, it was crazy. Like especially like having that like tough enough curse, you know what I mean? Coming into it, they really implement, they really stamp that on you once you like hired. Like it's all it's all fun games. Like hoorah hoorah until so you get in there and they're like, all right, let's put this kid to the ring here, which that's cool with me, bro. Like I was always about like earning your stripes, mm-hmm. but like my personal opinion, like the way the XT kind of like try to like launch itself into the future and like start right away, they were just plugging and playing sickos from all over the nation and they're doing a good job recruiting sickos too at that Mm -hmm. uh shout out to my man canyon but like basically what they didn't realize within that was like this pot they would stir because in my opinion in my perception it was like there's a type a type b there's the type a that's the guy that like you know maybe played a couple high school sports maybe maybe even a couple college sports but always die hard wrestling like from the jump like sick which is like all respect right maybe he found himself in the indies he made a name for himself hit a couple big time things, maybe caught some wind on social media, boom, he's an XT, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. He, his name's already in the streets of the indie loop. All that politics is like already taking care of himself because he's already done that. And, I, and that's respectable, that's honorable, no matter what it is. Like in football terms, like maybe you're a walk on red shirt at mm-hmm. college, you have to stay a whole year being practice dummy. Then now finally next year, you're starting to ball out of control a little bit now you're against the PT. Next mm-hmm. thing you know, you're making some noise. You know, it's the same dynamic, but like the thing is, the culture difference is like uh, something else. It's, it's, that, it's that X factor that you can't really name. So like that's that type A and the type B would be someone more like myself where it's like you've already had some successes in like other uh, other field and other ecosystem that made you shine and stand out. Maybe you're charismatic within that. Mm-hmm. And then so now they're like, oh, this is a guy like, right? He's already a character. He can already move. He can do some things special that some of these guys can't because he's been doing a whole different lifestyle. So let's plug him into our implement. But then there becomes this weird a love hate relationship where like you know a guy like me can like definitely play his part knows the system can integrate but it also has like you know like i'm a grown man type thing so there's like levels and then you start seeing some weird politics with guys that are just it's their mission to like put you through that initiation or whatever even if it's passive aggressive which it mostly is so it's like kind of like trying to like read minds so i was out there trying to read minds but i was also hurting feelings so it was, i was playing this weird spiritual warcraft and then I, I started to get caught up in it a little bit. I noticed I noticed there was definitely a reaction chain that directly yeah. implemented with my like playtime per se, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then I, they were just kind of benching me. Benching me. Then I came up on a little concussion, right? And mm-hmm. then there was like also some like politics. You know, when Billy when Billy Gunn was still hired, bro, I could see I could see the I could see the horizon, bro. I'm like, wow, this must be a beautiful sunrise, right? I'm mm-hmm. like, damn, let's go, Billy Gunn. Like he had a good mindset. He was very competitive nature kept everything correct, would snap when he had to, but was like honorable and like a good leader. Mm-hmm. Like I know I've been a part of championship teams, m- multiple. So I know, I know when I see a leader, mm-hmm. good coach, mm-hmm. right? When he got like, vor- like a hard off for certain angles, since dude already loved me. And I was definitely trying to play the, play the game though still, you know what I'm saying? You gotta like whatever code you're playing, if you want to be, you know, winning, you got to play the game the correct way. So, I'm, you know, I was trying to do it, but this guy had it out for me a little bit. And I might rub, rub him a couple of wrong ways socially just because I was kind of on my suave shit coming in and like, charming, bro. Like, I'm a charmer, dog. Like, I, I like I like to make people happy and I also like to make people laugh. And then I also am like an entertainer by nature. So, like, when I was doing that flu- fluently with some people, it was like kind of like I would cut them off guard and then be like, oh, like, I wasn't supposed to award you that left type of vibe. And then that like turned into turmoil and then that mm-hmm. turned into other things. So it was kind of like, it was just one of those things like that. Then like, then the final, final nail in the coffin came, bro. I don't know if you remember the Twitter beef. Uh, everyone, yeah. everyone tripped about the Twitter beef. There was, there was the remark I made. Right. So like the, also the type B, the type B's, the Yetis, the, the other athletes, the other like random non wrestlers that get recruited in the next E, they all like, don't aren't aren't so savvy with the lingo yet because like as we all know there's like the insider terms and then Mm -hmm. there's like the outsider terms Mm -hmm. and there's this mystical realm of sheath that 
just depending on how over you are, you can like wave the sheath like this, or if you're not over, you gotta hide <laughs> okay. in that motherfucker. Right. If you ain't over, if you ain't over, you're you're here in the knapsack chilling, waiting here for your shine, right? Yeah. Otherwise, you can just wave the sheath all over if you want. If you're yeah. sicko, I'm waiting that motherfucker. But anyway, <laughs> so so also within that, we're learning the new lingo. So let me track back to the lingo. It, in the locker room, you know, I mean, you might hear on some funny stuff, like if I was a new football player, for instance, when I was playing football, from my perception, it's like a rookie coming in, like, damn, rook, like, rookie, rookie, you call him rookie straight up, it's just a rookie, you know what I mean, I mess with them a little bit, just nothing more, just trying to, like, tough them up, wake them into the culture, absorbing it into the nucleus, right? So these guys would be calling like some of the new guys jobbers, jobber this, jobber that, just like low-key, no, no one's crying, they malicious, it's cool, but then, like, that conditioning, I was kind of like, dang, all right. So one night, I don't know if you remember, it was a social outcast came out. I don't know if it was the premiere or like it was a second, third time out. They came out, they did their hoorahs. They did their little lap around the ring. Mm-hmm. They're making their way in the ring. And then all of a sudden, Big Show's music hit. Big Show comes out. He just, he doesn't have no time for this crap. You know what I'm saying? He comes out, dink one, dink two, dink three. They're all, three of them are out. The other one doesn't even know they're out yet. He yeah. grabs him, slams him. Eureka. He walks out. It's just hilarious, right? So then, me, I'm at home. I'm in, I'm in, bro. I'm watching my game show. I'm like, I'm about to come up into this. I'm, I'm watching. I'm, I'm staying current. I'm watching, right? I'm like, whoa. So I'm gonna interact. They had just deemed me Bronson Matthews. Bronson. I already had heat from uh, various reasons. So they're saying I have heat. He's always Bronson Matthews, kind of stale, right? So I'm like, oh, I'm Bronson the Nuke Matthews. I got nuclear heat. I'm the most controversial man of sports entertainment today. That was kind of my pitch. You know, I was hitting that hard, and uh, basically. I put, I put out this tweet, bro, after I saw the Big Show slam them all. They're, they were calling themselves the co- social outcasts, mm-hmm. okay? I messed up. I said, yup, I like it, dot, 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 return, hashtag social jobbers. So that kind of like trended for like a hot second. Kevin yeah. Owens re- 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 responded to it. He got hot, dot, 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 dot. Like Bull Dempsey hit me like, you shouldn't have done that. I'm like, damn, I didn't even know, but it's too late, right? He's like, yup. And then like the next week, I was kicked out of the locker room. Next week, I was kicked out of the locker room. But the thing is, no one really came up to me and was like, yo, you kicked out of the locker room. Like this passive aggressive email. Bloom getting mad at me, asking me if I was drunk. I'm like, yo, bro, I'm interacting with the company, baby. Like, I'm, I'm starting heat. Like, everyone was tripping about it. Like, I, I just did a little thing, bro. Everyone, no one's talking about the social outcast at this moment. They're talking about Yeti mm-hmm. and how he's like, you know, hitting this little like beef. But yeah. anyway, I use that insider term they wanted to use that as like the booby trap to like send me into the narnia closet and just let me get found later or something so all this time passed i caught like a petty concussion at practice one time so i, I was kind of like backing off for a while like i had a little vision issue but it was nothing i was blessed to like get over right away it was just something that like had me kind of shook for a little bit and uh through that and like legal uh contractual maneuvers it would just it just fizzled away and we just went our separate ways bro mm. Wow. Madness, mad, madness, wow. madness, madness in the cut. What <laughs> quick, what quick, you know, yeah. Some people run marathons, some people run sprints. Maybe I'm out here running 40 yard dashes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so. there you go, man. Good stuff. All right, so How are you uh, doing though, bro? I'm doing good, man. I uh, I'm uh, I'll be a doctor in a few in a few weeks in forensic psychology. Oh, so, uh, oh wow, shoot, wow, wow. remember PG? PG. Oh, oh, dang. oh <laughs> hey, hey. okay, yeah, here we go. Uh, yeah, yeah, Congrats, man. bro. That's big time. Thank Congrats, that's appreciate big time, it, bro. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I appreciate oh, yeah. it, man. So I've been uh been been putting a lot of work in, and uh, yeah, man, finally paying off. So uh, yeah, I'm I'm excited about it, man. It's starting yeah. a whole career so yeah what, what good what, what what good timing too we're gonna need them bro yes gonna, this is gonna open up a whole new encyclopedia for you to document honestly that's the right social realm <laughs> and then mix with the mix with the mix with the post-corona realm and yes. they're gonna have babies and you're just gonna be like diagnosing them bro go find them go. <laughs> write, write a new book straight there up you go. That's, that's all kinds now <laughs> uh all right man so uh i want to ask you a few questions man i want to respect your time and uh just uh you know provide some short answers man yeah, and, uh, you ready to rock that's rock right. bro all right marissa's asking um what made you quit wrestling uh just the uh just the natural uh guidance of uh, the universe is pulling me apart from it. You know what I'm saying? It was more of like a thing. I was like a mutual breakup that you hear about. It was, uh, wilted and just wasn't working out and I didn't, I wasn't getting any push, any absorption. So it was just something that fizzled out. 
Mm-hmm. All right. Um, Brandon, uh, Brennan's asking, doing your time and tough enough, was there any judge that gave you the best advice? If so, care to share what they said to you? Uh, yeah, I would say when Hulk Hogan was still on the show at the beginning, he just came up to me straight up and was like, you're going to win this thing if you just stay loud and proud. He's like, don't don't let anybody like bury you back. And I honestly took that advice and like kind of like turned it up, stayed forward after that. He said something like, don't be a, uh, don't be furniture in the room ever. Mm-hmm. And then wow. so brother, turned it up and that like <laughs> ironically hit me also. Yeah. <laughs> brother. <ugh. laughs> oh yeah. Um, what <laughs> harder than it looked? Yeah, I mean, like, uh, for instance, when I was playing football, we'd go through two days and your body would be broken down by the end of it, sore in every direction, every joint, every muscle. But then all of a sudden, like, I turn around, like, I'm, I'm thinking in my head, this is what it's going to be like. I get out there, I'm practicing flips, slams, rolls and variations. My next game, Kings were doing back rolls, doing all this, like, what if scenario stuff. And next, I was waking up stiffest neck, stiffest back I ever felt. Like, I was broken at times. So I wow. actually had to start getting, like, chiropractics. You know, like especially like the bigger body or the more weight they're moving around. I was trying to lose weight. Like right now, I'm sitting about 270. Mm-hmm. I was trying to be 255, leaner, lighter when I was in there. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like I would say wrestling was definitely harder than I expected it to be in, when it came to physical like yeah. exertion and technicality. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Antoine's yeah. asking, uh, do you stay in contact with any WWE wrestlers you w- work with or was close <clears throat> to? Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, Dan. Uh, Mantha, Dan Mantha, he was like my boy. We're like the road dogs. Like when we were together, we were just always mobbing, like sharing the same kind of story, like just getting like this pressure and this heat from everybody just being in the room breathing wrong. They were kind of just like we were disruptors in there, and it was obvious. So like me and him had to like stay together because they like pushed us in the corner together, basically. And uh, I mean Patrick from the show, he's my dog too. He's like. I mean, we we definitely put on some good, some good uh, tension between us, you know. However, the fans may think, but me and him are good friends. Like, I'm proud of him. He's been killing it. He's he, he's a young a young kid that like saw a vision and hit, like made some moves and made that shit happen right now. Made that shoot happen right now. Sorry, mm-hmm. and uh, I'm proud of him. I would say uh, Biff Busick, you know my man Oni Lorkin. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn, that's my, that's yeah, my dog. I, mean... he, I have mad respect for him too. He's hilarious. Yeah. Never be a phone dad. Straight up. Only look and <laughs> shout out. Never be a phone dad. You already know what it is, my G. Uh, what else? I don't know. Like, Tony Sabatelli was always like-minded. I have to respect for him, too. He's still in there trying to, like, he came, he's coming back in next year from, like, a pec injury. He's, like, a name to look out for. He's a sicko, bro. Mm-hmm. Nice. Uh, everyone else was kind of, trying to fizzled out with sour, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, I don't know. My, my man Dan is, like, my A1 from the whole, the whole gimmick, though. Straight up. Nice, nice. Couple more. Um, uh, how do you like uh, CSUP and playing with Joss uh, Sandoval and Darius? I went to East High with uh, with them, with them, with them. Oh yeah, those are my boys. Uh, I mean, I was roommates with Joss Sandoval for a long time. I grew up with that fool. It feels like, and I love him. Darius too. He's my boy. He's a fellow D lineman, and he's one of my best friends uh, on the team too. For a, like long stint, we were like uh, roommates on the road. He's a G. He's been uh, he's been through hell and back. He's still on the grind for it. He's like Darius is uh, playing CFL, and then he came back. He's trying now. He came out of a knee injury. He's trying to get back on. He's looking good. He's looking healthy. He's trying to make it go again. Mm-hmm. Uh, Josh Sandoval still in Pueblo. He's like he was a le- he's a CSUP legend. He's a sick ass slot receiver, like sicko, and he also. Uh, now he's just out there public, like holding it down for his family. He's got a beautiful son. He's got a beautiful wife. He's got a whole like nice little a lot of land. Like I'm proud of him too. So I mean, everyone, CSU Pueblo Pack family, like everyone turned out great. Uh, we're all like some disbanded soldiers that kind of fell through the D1 trickle. That should have been D1 players, but I don't have a CSU Pueblo D2 mm-hmm. collected the national championship together, and like we're all just kind of like some scorn like. Sickos that should have been in the top dog spot, some underdog stories, you know what I'm saying? So, anybody sees you, Pueblo, beautiful stories over there, yeah, yeah. Shout out to Elvis, yeah. 
Good stuff. All right, last uh, last question from Corey. Would you ever go back to WWE or AEW if you were asked? Uh, I would never go back to WWE. I would go to AEW if, uh, if Billy Gunn uh, like hit me up on some G shit and was like, "Yo, come, bro. I need like this is what it is. There's like this money for this this amount. Of, we're gonna get you to this level." And he knows like the word like, I don't care. Like it doesn't even matter, bro. I'm ready. Why would you yeah, never go back to, to WWE back right now? But at the same time, I just don't like like I can't stand for. Like I can't like imagine being part of a tribe that like you were like you'd give your all for it, you'd like die for it at times and then like they just disband you and they don't give a damn about you. And then like people that heard the legend of you when you when you were in that tribe briefly ask you why why won't you go back? And you're like, because they, they don't want me, dog. Like why would I go back? Like, you know what I'm saying? They didn't want me, they don't want me like and you could like wrap it around and then how they could like reassign. But I see how dirty and like scorn and like infested everybody is and like it was just like a, a sketch. Sometimes the experience was just like uh, something that now that I know AEW exists, it's like why? Like why would I? You know what I'm saying? If I'm gonna if I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna join this new tribe and like mm. start over fresh and like un understand the lessons I learned in the WWE. And not go back to like I'm not gonna heat up some McDonald's. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna try to go get some Wagyu <laughs> and like let's get let's get some of the asparagus on the plate. <laughs> You know what I'm saying like I, I already like I, I'm cool with the McDonald's like I learned that lesson I'm trying to get some wagyu over here and some chips in my pocket you know what I'm there saying I'm trying to play these like reindeer games I'm trying to play some I'm trying to do some grown man stuff and have some fun and make some make some moments because I got that tank heavy still but yeah uh, I mean at the same time I ain't trying to pitch nobody I got I got a good bright future right now I'm in a good circle of people I'm blessed like some of the elites that I'm able to train uh I feel very like bonded with and I'm proud to be a part of their circle. And like, I see myself like starting to flow, especially even amongst all this Corona activity, I was able to kind of like reroute and like us as a dog pound family, like shout out to Kirk Wires, like sickos, like we were able to like readapt this company, and, like continue to thrive and continue to move forward. Mm -hmm. So like, and I, I know I'm a, I'm a part of that. So and that's only because I've done it once and I can do it again. I can do it again. You feel me? So yeah, nice, man. That's why I would move forward. I can go back to something, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Straight up. You sure, man? Listen, I, I I've got yeah. uh, I'm cool with Billy Gunn, man. I've got his number. I can text him right now, man, and I can pitch it for you. Uh, I can text him and say, "Hey, man, yeah, I'm Billy, cool I, I, uh, he, uh, give him a, give him a call." Yo, yo, I live. I mean, I live off of Melrose now. I mean, shit, I, I'm I'm out there. Sorry, I keep saying that, bro. I, I live off Melrose. I don't know. I'm 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 busy. I have a schedule right now. I make bread, bro. I'm, I'm not trying to play no games. Like I like money talks, baby. If he's with the is he with the gimmick? I don't know, right, bro. I think man. he remembers who okay. I am. I think he remembers. I think he remembers who I am, but I mean, maybe not. I mean, maybe okay. after reminded. I don't know. All right, man. I'll text him yeah. for you, man. I'll text him for you. You <laughs> mind? You mind me giving you his number? Uh, you mind me know. giving yeah. you uh, give him your number? Yeah. yeah, no cap. He probably will text me and say that he already has it saved in his phone. Crazy okay. bastard. All right, man. All right, all right. We'll see. Be sure to give me some credit if I bring <laughs> you back. If I bring you to AEW, I, I'm getting a cut. <laughs> Yo, what do you mean? What do you mean? It's, it's, it's documented, bro. What do you mean? Be my agent then. Let's go. That's Let's right, go. man. Agent, so. <laughs> I'm your agent. Live right it's here. I'm your agent. <laughs> Good stuff, man. Live, live, hey, we just signed verbal contract. Virtual. <laughs> That's right, contract. man. Hey. Absolutely. Uh, all right, man. Uh, it's been it's been fun, John. Uh, let people know. I mean, how can they find you on social media, social media, or anything, man? Uh, my Instagram is Yeti Hood, so it's at Y E T I H O O D. Okay. And then, I mean, I don't really mess with anything else but Instagram right now. Truthfully, like Facebook, dead to me. Boycott, blow. I think, and then uh, Twitter's cool, but like, that's where all the madness happened. I'm scoring from Twitter. I put out one tweet that was like, "How many symbols is that?" Yup, I like it social jobbers so we're talking about eight syllables that ended it all bro most wow. controversial tweet 2016. yo you know what's funny in my in my uh twitter bio it says like triple h like awarded me like at a meeting like i had the tweet of the year really? tweet of the year like months after that crap matt wow. matt funny i'm gonna rep that all the way to the end of time i'll rep that title i was awarded to me by triple h most nice nice uh, controversial tweet of 2016. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, bro. All right, man. I'm texting Billy Gunn for you, man. I'm serious. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll chat, man. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully he gets back with you. All right, no, no doubt, bro. All right, have a good night, man. Everybody, yeah, you too, bro. Peace, be safe. All right, man. That was uh, that was fun. That was fun. I'm literally texting Billy Gunn right now. I'm serious, man. I'm texting Billy Gunn, and um. I'm texting him right now. Uh, coming to AEW. Um, uh, let me see. I'm literally, I'm literally texting him right now. Coming to AEW. I'm getting a cut of this. <laughs> I'm getting a cut of this. Um, all right. Live in a living color exclusive. I just texted Billy Gunn and uh, told him that Josh was interested in coming to AEW. So you see this. And I will get a cut <laughs> if... if if he comes on uh if, if he appears on AEW television, you better you better believe it. All right, so uh let's see. Let's see. Good stuff, man. How is everybody doing? Ask Chris for any questions. Thank you, Marissa. I appreciate it, man. Very, very appreciate it. I'm um, going back through these uh through these comments from the PMP Nation. How's everybody doing? That was fun. Uh, that was fun. Uh, yes, he was lagging, Thomas. He was lagging. Um, I, I was going to say, hey, um, check your Wi-Fi, but we li we're live, pal. <laughs> As you see right there, we're live, pal. We're live. So uh absolutely um you know mo you know it man you know why i do it right i do it for you pancakes and power slam show uh bringing blast from the past every single week man you know how we do it on pmp we have some fun i bring back i surprise y'all with some names bring back some blast from the past <laughs> i actually brought back the Yeti. I brought back Josh Brettel from four years ago. So um, lots of fun, man. Ask Chris. Ask Chris. Where y'all at? Where y'all at, PMP Nation? Ask Chris. Hashtag ask Chris. What are y'all thinking about? What y'all got on y'all's minds? Um, chat room is lit tonight. I love it. Um. Alma, I'm well. Thank you for asking. Um, ask Chris. Um, welcome, Ricky, to the show. Uh, to PMP Nation, welcome, Ricky. We got a new one. How's everybody doing? Any newbies? Uh, go ahead and pop up, too. Uh, yes, I do have Billy Gunn's number. Um... Yes, I did hear about Jinder Mahal. Um, how many wrestlers' numbers do I have? How do you have so many numbers? How many have so many wrestlers' numbers? That was the question. Um, networking, man. Networking. Well, miss, sis. Um, networking uh, is huge and... Um, Keeping a good reputation on my show, keeping my show professional and uh, people uh, give me a good word. So, I mean, that's that's really what it's all about. Networking and, uh, you know, people who have been on the show saying, hey, yeah, that pancakes and power sandwich, yeah, that Chris Featherstone, he's a good guy. And then, you know, get a good word for me. And then they give me if they give me their number. We keep in contact. And then they give me a good word and trinkle, trinkle, trinkle. And eight years later, I got a bunch of numbers that I can just call and they know who I am. So, um, and I'm actually, and, be, and that is actually that, that relationship, continuing relationships is actually um, giving me 
opportunities to be uh, tight, uh, be have good relationships with current top WWE guys too. That um, I'll text and and um, say hi to, and all good, uh, including Jinder Mahal. Uh, <laughs> Jinder Mahal injured again. He had a knee injury surgery. Yes, uh, he did have knee surgery, and um, hopefully it was well. I never, I, I didn't contact him. I was so busy, I didn't contact him to see how he's doing. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, since we're on texting live, um, this is a lot of exclusives going on tonight. <laughs> now I'm texting Jinder Mahal. I'm texting Jinder Mahal live and in living color right now. I'm texting Jinder Mahal to see how he's doing. It's late, but uh, I'm gonna text Jinder Mahal to see how he's doing since we're texting since we're texting people i'm going to do that and i'm doing it now texting jenna mahal to see how he's doing um i'm texting gender Mahal right now. All right. Just texted Jinder Mahal. Checked on his knee. Now let's see if he gets back with me tonight. If he gets back with me tonight, we got a PNP exclusive. How about that? All right. Um, Marissa's asking, did I hear that they were updating the U.S. belt and the NXT belt? Yes, I did. I did hear about that. Um, I'm all for it. I'm all for both. Uh, NXT title, they already updated that. I guess they're updating it again. Um, NXT championship looks decent. Uh, US championship is in dire need of a overhaul. So <laughs> I'm, I'm actually pretty excited about that one because uh, we need another US championship, definitely. Um, so we shall see how that uh, how that comes about. So um, let me sure I get on my logo here. There we go. Well, my logo got to get all the logo there. All right. Um, let's see what else we got. There we go. Um, uh, right now it's just rumor based on the, uh, based on the tweet. Um, I mean, yeah, based on the, based on the uh, promo video, as far as same reverse is concerned. Uh, welcome Travis to the show. Welcome Travis to the PNP nation. Uh, appreciate that interview was talking about Josh the other day. Good stuff. Appreciate you coming in. Um, let's see. Thanks for putting Pueblo on a map tonight. My pleasure, Evan. Uh, <laughs> I did know. I did know, Mo. I did know. I was asked to, uh, to, to not say anything. Um, you got to stay tuned, Travis. I have an interview every single week. So every single week I have an interview on the show. So stay tuned. What's up? Lonzo faithful to the show. Good stuff. Um, yeah. Welcome Travis to the show. Newbie. Um, yes, I've been doing this podcast for years. So you got a lot of wrestlers friends. I do. I do actually. I've been doing this show for eight years and <clears throat> two months. So I have a lot of contacts, a whole lot of contacts. Um, Shane's asking, with all the call-ups to Raw and SmackDown, do you have any info or wrestlers debut on NXT? Uh, we should keep an eye on. <clears throat> um I, I heard Chelsea Green uh was coming up. Uh, perhaps, uh, Chelsea green, uh, which is the reason why Robert stone, um, uh, or Robbie E Robert stone, uh, the breakup because, <clears throat> uh, Chelsea is rumored to come up. Um, that's all I know from now. And then Velveteen dream. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about takeover Velveteen dream lost, which to me is really weird. Very, very weird that they didn't give him an opportunity to win the championship before it got called up. So, but what I heard, they're they're doing some type of weirdness. Like if you're not involved in an angle, um, <clears throat> you're staying on NXT. 
but if you're not if you're not involved in angle you call you get caught up but if you are getting uh, involved in an angle you stay so that's odd to me it's very odd um oh yeah it's 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 really weird to me um Let's see. Welcome. He surprised ever. I do. I do. Elvis. Elvis is a, a weekly faithful a PNP nation member. I do surprise. Uh, yes, Marissa. Appreciate the promo. Welcome to the show. Please come back and bring some friends next time. Yes, 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 yes. Absolutely. Um, yes, I am on a texting spree tonight. Absolutely. I'm on a texting spree tonight. Um, Yes, Elias is injured as well. Um, let's see who else we got. You know what? I actually talked to Britt Baker. I, don't, I used to have her number, actually, um, but I don't have any more because I don't think it's uh, – it's, she changed her number. I don't have any more. We actually talked uh, – we actually texted – a couple years ago, we actually texted back and forth. We actually had something scheduled for her to be on the show, and then – I think it was something dental related that she had to do. And so she had to cancel um, coming on the show. But she was she's very pleasant, though. She's very nice. Um, yeah, she was very nice. <clears throat> so shout out to Britt Baker. Um, yep. Almost on the show. Um, I would actually be interested in bringing her on. So I, I'm telling you, all listen, listen, I need uh a team i need a i need a pnp promo marketing team this is very serious like i i i don't my, my time is filled to the brim but you know i do it for you you know how i am every week pancakes and power slam show 428 episodes as you can see right there and counting 428 straight weeks uh, we've had an interview every single week for four years straight, four years straight. We've had an interview every single week on the show before that it would be once or twice a month. Uh, and then I was like, you know what, man, I'm all about innovating. I'm all about standing above standing out. And so I was like, you know what I want? I'm going to have an interview every single week on the show. And uh, I've done that. I've been faithful to that. And I've had an interview every single week for the past four years straight every single week. So even even when I was gone for a few weeks for with back surgery, my man, Evan Tech Proud, was uh, holding the fort down with uh, uh, some some guests uh, with, with some guest people. I brought some guest co-hosts I brought in as well. And uh, we still had um, still had guests on the show. So, um yeah, we we that's what we do here at Pan, Pancakes and Power Slams. I stay faithful to the PNP Nation by having interviews every week. And for those who listen and come on the show every week, y'all know that I'm faithful to y'all. Uh, so be faithful to me and donate. What a segue. What a segue. Uh, so yeah, if, if if you got if you got a few bucks to spare, uh, show your love on Patreon. I mean, I really, I, I brought back, I brought Josh Bradle, ladies and gentlemen. Four years, been off, been just been off the air, just just been off the off the site, just just been gone, and this disappeared uh, <laughs> away from wrestling, no longer wrestling after four years. Just being just off the grid, he comes back on the pancakes and power show. So, and it was live. So, um, he had an opportunity to interact with you all. So, um, obviously, you see how much I'm devoted to, uh, you know, being being who I am, man, and as a, a a good host and a good interviewer and a good journalist and a good podcast host and. I do it for you. So appreciate y'all. It's like two tiers, like one buck and like five ninety nine or something like that. It's you know, and you get uh really cool perks too. Uh Antoine knows that. Uh Mo, he has a pancakes and power slams t shirt. And uh <clears throat> well uh, I should be able to get my 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 uh design <clears throat> my printer. 
uh, the person who uh, does my t-shirts, um, you know, there's you want to make want to stay, stay want to stay safe because of COVID. So just give me about a few weeks and I'll get you the uh, wrench mob t-shirt mo two for being uh, a member for uh, more than six months. So if you are more, if you have the top tier for more than three months, you get a regular pancakes and power slam show with that logo right there behind me. And then if you are a um, six straight months, you get a um, <clears throat> personalized t-shirt, which actually has wrench mob on the front hashtag wrench mob has a pancakes and power slam show logo on one side and actually has your name on the other side of uh, this, the, the t-shirt on his sleeve. So go over to Patreon and donate. Appreciate it. Uh, what else we got? Um, were you a guest on my own show when everyone's feeling? No, I, I was out actually. I was recovering from back surgery. I had spinal fusion April of 2018. <clears throat> um, this is good. They said it was a red bearded man that read, uh, that ran over Elias. Um, WWE should pull a swerve and it should be Sami Zayn that ran over Elias, not Sheamus. Yep. I think that, um, uh, it seems as if, uh, that is actually going to be the case. So, um, I think that that is really good. I think it's a good way to, um, <clears throat> bring, bring Sami Zayn back. And I think it's a good way to, uh, bring relevance in both Sheamus and Sami Zayn and extend this. And seemingly, uh, from what it what I can pick up, it, it appears as if um, <clears throat> Sami Zayn could be coming back at, uh, at Backlash. That would be very interesting. Um, all right. Are those the Ask Chris questions we have for um, – for to for right now all right so we got some takeover to talk about we got some we got a few headlines we got some trivia as we do we got some backlash trivia, all backlash uh then somebody please remind me for the backlash at the end of the show like 12 45 or so please remind me of the uh backlash um uh predictions please remind me of that uh we're supposed to be doing wrestle war 89 review tonight uh i watched about an hour of it see this is one thing i do want to start doing um i might i might talk a little bit about it uh and more about it next week uh but let me know if you actually have the network let me know if you actually have the network because i want to start what what, what i want to start doing is i want to actually do live watch parties of older um older stuff older older uh shows russell war 89 would have uh, you know it's the perfect one um so let me know let me know if you have the network let me know um because what i'll start doing is i'll have us all play the same thing at the same time and then we'll watch you know, of course, I can't play it on here because they'll ping me. They'll block the WWE will block the video on Facebook and, and YouTube. So uh, what we should do, <clears throat> let me know if you have the network. So what we'll do is we'll all watch it from our individual consoles, screens, whatever. And then you can comment based on <clears throat> what you see. And then we'll, we'll kind of dialogue based on what we're seeing live based on our own personal screens. All right. So. We will uh, we'll do that. If a lot of people have the network of the PNP Nation, we'll we'll do that. All right, and that will be fun. All right, so y'all ready? Um, Antoine's. <laughs> that's funny. That could be fun, Chris. Alonzo says. Uh, Christopher has it. It was on it tonight when you went live. All right. Yeah. And plus there's free, like there's free tiers now. And the other I means only, it's only 10 bucks, y'all. So get the network. And, I, and, and I'm not getting paid for that either. I mean, get the network. It's only 10 bucks. So get the network. So let's have some fun with the network. Um, <clears throat> and we'll do that together. 
we'll uh, we'll we'll push. I'll press play, and uh, we'll do that. Mo has the network since the beginning. Yep, good stuff. Um, same here. Marissa says, good stuff. Um, Anthony from all from down under. Nice man. Welcome to the show, Anthony. I know it's like way far out away, like as far as time wise. I think it's like sometime in the morning, probably for you now. It's eleven fifty one p.m. here Eastern, here in the states. What time is it right now in Australia? Live from Australia. Good stuff. Uh, great for you to join us, Anthony. Live from Down Under. Good stuff. Marissa is asking, "What's the one match you're looking forward to watching on Backlash?" Yes, I have the WWE. All right, so um, none. <laughs> That's, just to be honest with you, I'm just I am not looking forward to backlash at all. I'd imagine Drew and and uh, lastly, I, I like both. Uh, this is probably the best time that Bobby Lashley could get the championship, but I'm 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 cool with Drew. Like I'm a Drew I'm a Drew McIntyre fan, so I'm a supporter of Drew McIntyre because he's been on the show and we've dialogued to several times after that. So. I, but it's like, I'm cool if Lashley wins just for Drew to regain it because Drew would eventually have it back, but at least that would be a title reign for Lashley because I think Lashley needs a title reign. He's getting up in age too. I think he's like 44 this year. So, you know, it's about, about that time. Wrestling years, you know, that's, that's, that's a little agey in wrestling years. Um, so it's time to get it. Um, uh, yeah, so he actually turns 44 next month. Um, so yeah, it's he'll be 44, so it's, it's time for him to go ahead and, and, and win that <clears throat> win that title. So do it, do it. Um, but we'll 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 do the predictions. Remind me, y'all again, remind me. It's it's I'm so not interested in backlash. The greatest match ever is such a, uh, a cheesy tagline that just – I'm not interested in Edge and Orton. <clears throat> I'm just not interested. It, I, it's not – It's nothing about it is, is causing me to want to, to be excited about about Backlash. I'm just, I'm just not excited about it. So we'll see. We shall see where it leads. But uh, as of now, I am not – I am not – I'm not excited. Uh, what else we got? PMP Nation. What else we got? PMP Nation. Um, tired of seeing Brock. Well, we haven't seen him in two years. Uh, I mean, two months. Two, two, two months. We haven't seen him in two months. Um, and so it's cool. I'm, I'm cool. I'm see. I'm cool with Brock, man. I'm, I'm cool with with Brock making those appearances now as champ. Uh, see, the thing is, I'm not as critical for him uh, being champ and being away as people are because, I mean, that's old school, actually. I mean, that's that's just old school wrestling. I mean, you you get the you, you get the people person being a who's the champ who's not there every week. It brings a better type of presence and mystique to the champion. It doesn't make him feel kind of oversaturated. And that's how it was when Hogan was around. Like he wasn't there every week competing against uh, competing on the top of the hour. Like it just the champion was a champion. The champion was the main event. And that's what it, you know, that's what it was. And that's what it should go back to the champ being the main event. And that's not being on raw from, from the beginning to the end. Like they've done with drew. Like he's, <laughs> he's there throughout the whole night. You know what I mean? Like, have that type of presence within the champ that you actually are waiting. You're actually promoting. NXT did this for a while, and I appreciate it when, when like Shinsuke Nakamura was champ and Finn Balor. They wouldn't be there every week, and then they would actually promote that he's coming the next week. I'm like, see, that's old school. That's how it should be. Like you're making the champ feel like a thing. Like feel like I'm I'm excited to 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 see the champion not oversaturate him throughout the program I mean, it doesn't really make him a championship type of feel to him 
And they need, to, they need to stop that with their champions, with their world champions, at least. The workhorses are usually the mid carters, the mid card champions. The Intercontinental Champion is learned is, is known as the workhorse championship. So Intercontinental, and even if you want to do it in the US, I'm cool with that too. But let those be the workhorse championships, and that's how it should be. Um I like Drew as a baby face, man. I, I like him. I, I like the fact that he's a cocky face and he's over. People like him. I am uh, I'm all for it. Uh, what do I think is the greatest match ever? Uh, see, see, greatest match ever. See, that's 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 subjective. It really is subjective. I mean. I have my favorite match ever, but as far as the greatest match, uh, probably from what I've seen, uh, I mean, I guess it's safe to say uh, Taker Michaels uh, uh, 25. Um, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed Flair Steamboat, uh, Chi Town Rumble. This, that may be up there. Um, that's probably up there as far as one of the greatest of all time. Um, uh, Steamboat and, and Savage, WrestleMania 3, that's up there too. Um, yeah, so it's really subjective, but as far as like, yeah, I mean, I have favorite matches, but as far as the greatest match ever, I mean, those three are up there. I mean, there's there's a few of there's there's a lot of sleepers that were like really good when you when you think about them, but they weren't promoted high enough to be like greatest ever matches. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, um, like I really like the uh, Kazuchika Okada and Kenny Omega series. Um, those were some fantastic matches. Um, I like the Kazuchika Okada and uh, um, Tanahashi series. I mean, I yeah, it's really subjective. Like, I, I, there's a lot. I mean, those those are among the greatest, I believe. Um, Michael's Razor ladder match. That one's that one's up there too. Yeah. Um, Yeah, I mean those. If I had to pick one, probably Steamboat Flair, uh, Chi Town Rumble, eighty nine. Probably, I'd say, uh, I'd say it's among the greatest. But again, it's subjective. But if I had to pick one, maybe that one. That one comes off the top of my head. That one, but I'm, I'm sure there's there's other ones that I'm I'm missing. Uh, did I hear about Charlotte wanting to wrestle Amanda? I Agree, disagree with that person agree with this i don't i i don't honestly i you know i i i'm with brian cage i, I you know i i think that uh women's wrestlers and this i'm old school man i i think that's um i i don't know i'm still i'm still one of those um I'm still like classy when it comes to old school like i just can't imagine you know uh, some uh, a lady getting clotheslined or pile driven by a by a guy like I, I, I'm I, I'm like a, um what is the guy's name oh gosh what's like the Robin Hood Robin Hood that's that's what I'm like I'm like the Robin Hood of just people I'm I'm, I'm such a defender of people. And so I can just imagine myself like stepping in like <laughs> in the middle of it. I just don't like it, man. I really don't. I, I you know, I, I can deal with it in spots. I'm okay with spots. I'm okay with someone healing it up so much that they get like a you know a spot. I'm cool with that. Like when you know Vicky would have her spots and when Stephanie would have her spots when she got RKO'd and when um uh, um uh, Dixie Carter got uh, power bomb through the table. May Young, like I'm cool with all that. I'm I'm cool with spots. I don't I don't mind that. But as far as just a regular an actual match, you know, it's one of those things that 
I don't like, I don't enjoy it. I, I don't, I don't enjoy it. I don't, I'm not, I wouldn't ban it per se. You know what I mean? Like I, I wouldn't ban it. Um, if there's like a mixed tag, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I'm not that I, I'm, I'm more, you know, I, I'm cool with the inner, inner gender part, you know what I mean? Cause what I see a lot with WWE's version of mixed tag is that they'll have the female come in and like hit or assault the guys. And then the guys, they don't touch the females. And it's like, eh, like, uh, really? Is that, is that how we, is that how we doing it now? So I'm, I'm personally not a fan. I think, um, I think, I don't think it's fair to, to, to do classes. I mean, to, to, to mingle, like mingle it like that, because essentially you have people who really should get their shine as female wrestlers, like a Kyrie Sane, right? So you, you, you wouldn't want to just abuse that intermingling, um, because people like Kyrie Sane should get love. But if you're putting them in a ring with like Bobby Lashley and then Bobby Lashley getting Kyrie Sane in a, figure four it's kind of like a slippery slope it really is i mean so I, I think people should get their shine i think there should be uh, i mean you get that in boxing you get classes in boxing you don't have like i mean it's not just gender it's weight too so i mean you know you don't have a, a super heavyweight someone over 260 pounds you know you, you don't get a super heavyweight going against like a flyweight right so i mean that that just wouldn't be fair um, yes, yes, wrestling is supposed to suspend, suspend disbelief, but your character is what really gets you over as far as suspending disbelief, not necessarily your ring skills, um, because your character is larger than life. Your character is what stands out big, not necessarily your in ring skills. So, uh, personally, I'm not a fan, not a fan. All right. Um, all right. All right. Ask Chris. We'll get into those. All right. So let's uh, let's jump into uh, the takeover review. So let's uh, let's do this. Um, Let's get on this takeover review. It's going to be fun. So without further ado, y'all know what time it is. Headlines, here we go. All right, here we go. Takeover review. Um, I think just uh, we'll, we'll we'll start with grades. What grades do you give Takeover? Um, and then we'll just break it down as far as um, the actual matches. Um, first of all, shout out to Todd Pettengill for coming back to uh, Takeover. That was really good. I was thinking in my head like they better have Todd Pettengill come back. They better have him come back. And they did. So I was very, very happy that they did that. Big shout out to Todd Pettengill for coming back. And I'm glad that he agreed to come back. That was really cool. Um, let's see. Looks like the comment section is flooded here. Um. I mean that uh yeah it's, it's China's an anomaly. I mean and, and plus she didn't do it for long. You know, it, it she didn't stay in the women's I mean she didn't stay in the men's division. It was it was an anomaly. I mean she was jack to the max and she's an exception to the rule, I believe. Um it was you know she stayed in the intercontinental title scene for a hiccup <clears throat> and then she ended up <clears throat> doing mostly like Eddie Guerrero, and then she went back to the women's division. And so it was, you know, that that was just kind of like a hiccup. And plus, you know, it was, it kind of fit a bit, you know what I mean? But, and, and China, you know, China wasn't a, the gimmick of China is what they were really pushing. And she was, she came in as a bodybuilder. Um, but again, I just, 
I wasn't a big fan of it then, actually, because especially because I was a big Jericho fan. I still am uh, one of my top five of all time. So uh, I was, uh, you know, back then I was like, what? but I understood it in that time. I wasn't necessarily like overwhelmingly opposing it, um, but I'm glad it was just temporarily because I wasn't a big fan of it. Um, look at it this way as long as the woman have a chance on winning the match against the man then I say why not um, again no I mean I, I just I wouldn't have that, that again so it's a slippery slope so I, it, it's unfair because someone who's built like Charlotte um, she can go she can compete against the man but someone who's built like Eo Shirai or Kyrie saying, "No, you're too small. You can't do it." I, I don't. I don't think it's fair. I think. I think you have smaller people who can compete, like smaller guys who can compete against smaller men, and I'm cool with that. And you have smaller females who can compete against smaller females. Again, there should be classes, you know. And again, if it's one of those things that, if if someone. Like Tessa Blanchard, I'm not a fan of her winning the Impact Championship at all, actually. Because essentially, this is what happens. You have a whole knockouts division, a whole entire knockouts division. So she beats someone like, you know, Sammy Callahan, wins the championship. And so she loses to someone, you know, pick pick whoever you want, you know, uh, Madman Fulton or whoever. So she loses against Fulton. And then if she has a competitive match against a smaller female in the knockouts division, that's essentially saying that the female who's smaller can, can, can beat up Madman or can beat up Sammy Callahan. And I, to me, it's just kind of like a slippery slope. I mean, just keep it in the class. I, I think, I think woman, I, I think the pay should be equal. If you're drawing as a female, as much as you're drawing as a male, if the numbers are equal, the pay should be equal. I mean, like I, I'm all for equal pay when it comes to when it comes to females. Um, I, I don't think that just because you're a female, um, <clears throat> you should get paid less. That's stupid to me. Um, if you draw, you draw. I mean, if you're bringing butts to seats, like Ronda Rousey. I mean, you know, she she was a draw, and she she catapulted the women's division. Should she get paid as much as the guys? Absolutely, because if you are a draw, you're a draw. It don't matter what gender you are. So they there should be equal pay. I, I I'm very 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 for that. And I think paying someone based on their gender uh, and not their drawing power is stupid to me. Uh, now I understand that you know typically f- you know, the women's division does not draw as much. So, you know, as far as just an average type of pay scale, I get it because you're actually paying for the draw. I get it. But if someone's drawing as strongly as a guy is, you know, if you look at quarter hour ratings and you're seeing that on a consistent basis, you know, this female wrestler is, is you know, producing more numbers ratings wise, they should get paid as much or even more, you know, than than guys. Um that's that's what it that's what the pay should be based on. Um all right, so let's uh let's 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 do it. What, what grades do y'all give um takeover? Honestly, I wasn't a big fan. I wasn't a big fan of it because I'm because I I I, I highly like I, I put takeovers at a very high pedestal. Because takeovers are so good, um, just consistently very, very good. So I put them on a higher pedestal. Uh, and so I'm saying, comparatively speaking, I was not a big fan of this one. Now, it wasn't bad at all. It wasn't a bad takeover. I, I, I can't recall a bad takeover. Uh, and I've watched pretty much all of them, if not all of them. Um, so I can't recall a bad takeover. So when I say I wasn't a big fan of this, it's comparatively speaking. I wasn't a big fan of this takeover based on all the other takeovers that in the whole series, right? So 
Um, the reason why I wasn't a big fan because I think there were moments that they missed out on. Uh, they missed out on Damian Priest beating Finn Balor. Um, to me, there was no reason for Finn to win. Uh, it didn't make sense at all. I, I don't. I don't think he should have won that match. I don't. Now, if they're pushing him for carrying cross okay now if there's a longer term investment in making somebody else over perhaps um damien priest is a good enough name to get some type of credentialing in in order to make carrying cross look better now i wouldn't be uh, opposed to that per se um but at the same time, you know, WWE is so quick of changing their minds with stuff. I mean, strike while the iron's hot, man. I mean, capitalize on that moment. Give Darian Cross, uh, Darian Cross, Damian Priest, uh, give him an opportunity to finally kind of break that glass ceiling because he's been in a bunch of you know high profile matches. He just have he just don't win them, you know. So, um. I think they should have done it. Uh, they should have had Damian Priest. I think that was a missed opportunity. I definitely think the missed opportunity was Velveteen Dream winning the title. Now, you know, there's rumors of Adam Cole possibly, you know, not, not necessarily leaving, but his contract coming up in, in August. Um, So to me, it, it's it doesn't make sense to me because if his contract's up, I mean, he's ready made for AEW. His 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 girlfriend, you know, Britt Baker, is one of the most popular negative, you know, as far as a negative standpoint. But she's still a super heel. She and she's doing a really good job at it. Um, you know, she's one of the most focal points on AEW programming right now. So he's ready made to go right into. Um, AEW, and to be honest with you, Cedric Alexander is too, because right now Big Swole is feuding with Brick uh, Britt Baker, so you could have like a mixed tag because uh, Big Swole is married to Cedric Alexander, and Cedric Alexander's, I mean, they're just oh, <laughs> talk about wasted talent, man. I mean, they're just doing a terrible job with Cedric Alexander. So I think that Cedric Alexander would have a much better opportunity uh, to be in AEW with Big Swole. So I think that uh, they should be they should be it should be like a mixed tag. Cedric Alexander and Big Swole, and then Adam Cole, Bay Bay, and uh, Britt Baker. And Britt Baker and Adam Cole, like they're just heelish, you know, personalities. I mean, it fit right in AEW. So I think that that's what they should do if it was up to me. So with that, it doesn't make sense to keep the momentum with Adam Cole and have him win the title. And then, I mean, what are they having against Velveteen Dream? If they're trying to call if they're calling Velveteen Dream up to the main roster, it, it doesn't make sense to me because – it's stupid to bring someone up to the main roster or I guess lateral is what they are kind of doing it, but it's, it's, it's up, <laughs> it's up to the main roster to bring someone like um, dream up when he's losing a series of matches. You know, he, he lost the, the, the feud against Adam Cole. Usually the baby faces get the comeuppance, but he lost, you know, numerous matches against Adam Cole. So what are they really doing with dream? I mean, you're losing stock. You're losing momentum when it comes to dream. This would have been a perfect opportunity to give him the championship and just kind of see where, where Cole's at as far as his contract's concerned. So, uh, and then, and then I've heard that uh, they're considering even bring Cole up to the main roster. So, that doesn't make sense at all. And then I heard they're considering bringing El Shirai up, but they gave, gave her the title. I'm not necessarily opposed to giving El Shirai the championship, though. Um, however, um, they are messing up with Rhea Ripley, man. I mean, they are just, oh, man. 
Talk about wasted goods. Talk about just, oh, I mean, she was just red hot going into the end of 2019. Um, big quality wins, winning the title, uh, you know, a, a Survivor Series win. And, you know, going into WrestleMania and challenging um, uh, Charlotte. You know, so I, you know, it's it's one of those things, man. I, I think that, um, I think that they they're messing up with Rhea Ripley. It, it's it's a it's sad because she was really one of the hottest names in all of WWE, not just NXT, but all of WWE, and they're just butchering that. It's it's just it's terrible to me, absolutely terrible. Um, <clears throat> I don't understand why there was a purpose for the. The triple threat, maybe because Eros still kind of heelish a little bit, although they're kind of transitioning her back over to baby face. Um, you know, Rhea's the clear face, Charlotte's the clear heel, and then Eo's kind of in between. So I guess that's why they did the triple threat. I, I'm definitely not opposed to Eo winning the title. I think I'm I'm totally for her winning the championship. She should win the championship, she's great. Um, but I don't know. It's just, you know, find some, find somebody else to be in that mix and then kind of have Rhea Ripley being a few to kind of bring her momentum back. Uh, because that was, that was bad. They, they probably should have had a Rhea Ripley. You know, one thing I would be cool with that they did a six man, I mean, the six woman tag, but I mean, you have people, you know, there, there's names that Rhea could have won against, you know, they could have made some adjustments. Uh, as far as uh, kind of as far as getting Rhea Ripley a win, a quality win, and they did a bad job with it. Uh, I'm not I'm not a fan of what they did with that. So they they shouldn't have had Rhea in that match. Um, what else about it? Um, Keithley or Gar Keithley and Gargano was good. I think they did a really good job with uh, making that interesting. I mean, just the size was. I mean, talk about small person, small guy, you know, <laughs> fighting a big guy that pounce, you know, uh, they could kind of be used in those roles. I couldn't I couldn't imagine. I wouldn't want to see Keith Lee pounce someone like a, uh, Kyrie saying, you know, over the plexiglass, you know, through the plexiglass. I was like, oh, no. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I'm not a. I, I'm I'm I like how the story of that match ended up. There was some close, there was some false finishes, some very close calls. Seemed like Gargano could have won a couple times, so it was good. Uh, it was a really good match. Um, talked about Cole and Dream. Wasn't a big fan of that. Uh, Cross and Champa. Uh, I'm I liked how they did that. Um. I liked how they really put crossover in it, and I think that they should uh, put crossover. Now, do you push him to the moon? No, I would have him have a big quality feud or two first, uh, namely someone like a Finn Balor. I, I would, I think Finn Balor would be perfect for Cross. Um, another another high quality feud. Whoever you want to put in there. Uh, Dijakovic is coming up to 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 the main roster, which I think is a bad idea. But um, I mean, I really don't know. I mean, there's people there that that you can put them in high quality feeds. It seems like the roster is so thin now in NXT of like high, you know, um, of like high quality names, right? Like Dexter Loomis, perhaps. You know, he's you know he's going the baby face route, which I'm cool with them. I'm, I'm kind of liking what I'm seeing with how they're doing uh, Dexter Loomis. Uh, and, and I'm, and I'm kind of surprised how actually the baby face role is actually working for him because he's kind of playing like a, like a creepy good guy, you know, this kind of like a, a creepy Avenger is what is what it seemed like he's doing over the past weeks with, uh, you know, with undisputed era. So, I like that. I actually like that. So maybe, you know, if they want to do cross and I mean, cause Dexter Loomis is still getting his footing. So I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that yet. 
But I think Balor would be perfect for that role. Um, and then yeah, the woman's main event. So I was, I was cool with that. PMP Nation, your thoughts? Um, let's see. Ryan thinks. Uh, welcome, Ryan, to the show. First of all, new uh, newcomer to the PMP Nation. So welcome, Ryan, to PMP Nation. Best match at NXT Takeover: Johnny Gargano versus Keith Lee. I agree. I, that was my favorite. That was my favorite. A dream interview that I've been interviewed yet. Um, the Rock. There you go. I guess Rock. Uh, best one to Mo was Dream and Page. It's a good match, but I think the uh, finish was was bad. Um. Mm. Yes, I did. I, I did the beginning. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I liked it. I liked this six person tag match. I think it was a good way to give uh, Mia Yim, uh, Tegan Knox, and Shotzi Blackheart um, some momentum because I think those three um, females are, are, are good baby faces to have right now. I, I liked it. I like Tegan Knox, actually. I think Tegan Knox has a lot of potential. Um, I hope they do something with her. I, I like her. Um, all right. PMP Nation. Um, yes, we know that forever. Champa don't want to leave NXT for a while. Yeah, he doesn't want to. Yeah, he don't want to go. Which I'm I'm a fan of. Again, I'm a fan. I support his logic when it comes to not wanting to leave uh, NXT. I mean, less dates, livable, very very livable income, and uh, he feel like he'd be burned out. So he he feel like he would want to quit if he goes to the main roster. And I think that's very smart. Look, he's making. Champa's, I don't know, I don't know what he's making, uh, but I'm at, I mean, he's making six figures. I think it's quite clear that he's making six figures. Six figure income, um, less dates, and once a week, as far as tapings are concerned. And so, I mean, you really can't beat that, man. Uh, and it's at the same spot, you know, it's in full sale. So with, with WWE, you got to travel all the time. You know, you go from place to place, you know, when they start opening stuff back up, you go from place to place in WWE, but in, you know, take in, in uh, NXT, you only one place. So if you live in winter park, if you live in Tampa, if you live in Orlando, if you live in Lakeland, you know, if you live in any of those Florida area, you know, in that area in Florida, you're all, you're good to go. I mean, hour and a half, two hours, you know, drive tops. Uh, but typically, probably forty five minutes to an hour. And if you live in Winter Park, you're right there, basically. Uh, live in Tampa, it's a forty five minute drive, hour drive. Orlando uh, is is hour fifteen, hour thirty around there. So, I mean, you, you're you're set. You mean you drive hour hour. 15 hour 30 every Wednesday, and there you go. I mean, NXT does do live events and things like that, but I mean, schedule's definitely not anywhere near as uh, rigorous as uh, main roster schedule. And he's making good money, so I don't blame him. I think that's a, I think it's a good call for him for sure. Um, yeah, exactly. Mo, why would you want to leave? <laughs> right? Why would you want to? Um. Yeah, Mercer said true. I guess. Yeah, it's true. I mean, why would you want to leave? <laughs> well, I, I wouldn't want to leave if I like if I'm making good money and I'm a top guy. Like he he won't be a top star on the main roster. He's a top guy in NXT making six figures. Only, I mean, you know. Doing one spot every week in full sale, 
and so it's pretty set. Uh, Brian's saying, uh, I think it's hard for WWE to get a feel for what and who fans are behind right now because they can't have them at the shows and get their reactions. Yeah, I mean, well, they're kind of, pe- you know, they're kind of peppering, uh, you know, the, the, the PC employee, the PC uh, trainer, trainees, you know, to, to, I'm old school, so I like it. I mean, you're actually cheering the faces and booing the heels, so I, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of that. I think that's what makes, I think that's what gives characters their layers when people actually cheer and boo the baby faces and the heels. Um, otherwise, just some big mishmash of, it doesn't really, it's just characters get lost in, in dual chants and dual cheers. You have you stand out if you are popular or if you are the most hated, you know. Um, and so I, I, you know, that's a good assessment, Brian. But I think at the same time, it's like, um, I mean, act your role, you know, act your role. If you're supposed to be a heel and you get cheered, you're not doing a good job. Uh, I say that all the time. Stand by that. Uh, all right, let's go. Next, we have uh, your boy Zach Ryder. So Zach Ryder is shaking in anger. He's a um, he was very unhappy uh, with what going on. So uh, he was on this podcast. Him and uh, you know uh, Brian Myers, uh, Kurt Hawkins. They have their own podcast. He. Uh, what is it called? The major f- figures wrestling podcast, I believe, something something around there. And so he, he he explained how WWE, and this is petty. This is very very petty. They he explained how WWE contacted his fiance Chelsea Green. Uh, I think Elvis asks about females on the show. I've had Chelsea Green on the show before. Um. Chelsea Green. So WWE fired Zack Ryder because they're they were doing their wave of cuts because of COVID. Uh, I'm sad, but from a business point, I get why they're doing their wave of cuts. I get it. But at the same time, it is someone's livelihood. So I get that too. Kind of like a double-edged sword. So <laughs> petty. So WWE texted Chelsea Green to ask Zack Ryder if they could use his pool for a segment including Otis and Mandy Rose for SmackDown. Now, that is petty. I want to text Chelsea to ask his fiance to use a pool but the fiance we just fired a couple months ago, but we want to use his pool for SmackDown of the company he was fired with. That that's petty. And so he said that he was shaking with anger. Understandably so, uh, because I would I would be very angry at that too. <laughs> I would definitely be very angry at that too. That was very petty. Um PP Nation, which I gotta say about that. Um. Uh, yeah, use this pool for the Otis and Mandy segment. Uh, I mean, of course, he you know it, he rejected it. He you know it, it was a no for sure. Uh, I actually talked to uh, Arquette's agents, and uh, there was some interest a couple of years ago. But uh, I'll try that again. That was again. Listen, I need a marketing team. So if you are interested in being a part of my PNP uh, promo team, uh, let me know. Hit me up on uh, DM me at Chris Prolific. Uh, DM me. Uh, I need about a good solid five people. All right. Um, because my schedule is just getting all over the place. And I'm sure y'all still want PNP to be on the air. You know, it's been 428 episodes. So y'all still want us to be on the air. I'm still giving y'all weekly uh, interviews, but my schedule is just getting. And plus, I'm about to be a doctor in a few weeks too, so my schedule is going to get even crazier. So, um, 
yeah, just give me, you know, just I, I'll get a team together, get a PNP team. And uh, it, it just, I want to get to the point where I got every, all the ducks in the row. I got the interview set. We're good to go. And then I sit down and I talk wrestling. That's <laughs> that's I get sponsors and I get all that good stuff. And that is what I want. And uh, but I'm still doing the preparation. I'm still doing all that stuff. I'm still doing the the thumbnails. I, mean, I need help with all that. Like I need help with thumbnails every week. I need someone to do my thumbnails. I need someone to do my video editing. Um, I need someone to do uh, uh, timestamps. That's a that's another big one too. Timestamps. Uh, I want someone to. Um, in the description, do timestamps of what I'm talking about. So I need someone to do that too. All right. Um, so I'm, I'm very serious about this. I need someone to help with my thumbnails every week, to help with my video editing every week, to help with getting timestamps, and someone who is skilled in in you know um, in um, being a liaison um, to be sure to um, get my um get the guests on for me every week so i need i need assistance heavy assistance in those areas and those that, that's something i'm that, that's something i do by myself every week so on top of finishing my dissertation to become a doctor and most importantly being a husband father of three uh kids seven and less uh and having a, another job as a mental health specialist that's my day job and then a night job as a pro wrestling journalist. So I have a loaded, loaded schedule on top of being a podcaster with y'all every week, on top of having my uh, Theology and Apologetics podcast, big, 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 bigly schedule. So I need about five people. Um, uh, DM me at Chris Prolific or ask for, you know, However they do that, you know, shoot me a DM or actually uh, you can do IG too. Uh, at Chris Prolific on IG uh, um, too. So you can hit me up on IG. I think that might even be better as far as messaging is concerned, because I don't know. I think you have to be a follower to mess to DM someone. They might have changed that with Twitter. Uh, so if you can DM me, if you can DM me on Twitter um, without having to follow and all that, that's cool. Do that. But follow me on Twitter though at Chris Bullock again IG. Uh, if you can uh, message me on IG too, that's fine too. So let me know. Let me know. Let me know. Let me know. Um. Yes, and again, I'm very serious about this. I I really can't do much on on the show uh, anymore. Really. It's been a over eight years, and so I, I really need some uh, assistance with. Uh, I need to get give me a team together. All right, let's see. Um, let me see. Do I feel that the woman should have their own show each week? Uh, no, the man doesn't have their own. Man doesn't have their own show every week. I mean, maybe 205 Live, but 205 Live sucks. I mean, so um I think they should have pay-per-views. I think evolution uh making it a one one time deal was a bad idea. I, I was a big fan of evolution pay-per-view. I think they should have an all-female pay-per-view. Totally, totally cool for that. I think you don't want to drive stuff to the ground. I mean, you wanna you wanna have you wanna respect the aura of mystique and you don't want to oversaturate saturate stuff and they don't they're not even building the woman strong enough now to transition to a uh own show i would reconsider if they actually build their woman up strong enough uh to actually have uh momentum uh so once they do that, I'll reconsider. But the women's division isn't strong enough right now to even do that. Um, yes, 205 Live is still a thing. Yeah, absolutely. 
Uh, yes. All right. So, yeah, hit me up at Chris Prolific uh, ASAP. Uh, ASAP, at Chris Prolific ASAP on IG or Twitter if you want to be a part of uh, the PNP promo team. All right, lastly, uh, let's talk about Randy and Kim Orton having Twitter beef with Tommaso Ciampa uh, and Vince McMahon is upset. So uh, let me read some of these tweets. <clears throat> so let's start off with, <laughs> this is crazy. Um, let's start off with um, Orton. So Orton said, heard um, WWE NXT TakeOver in your house was great. Slapping my leg for you guys. Sincerely, leg slap. And then Champa responds by saying, my daughter has been having trouble sleeping. Luckily, I found a remedy. Randy Orton matches. Better than NyQuil. Sincerely, an entire locker room who busted their A. Um, and then Orton responds by saying, it looks like I hurt the feelings of the self, self-appointed locker room leader of a wrestling school. Let me know what time the leg, uh, leg slap class starts so I can take my game to the next level. And then uh, Kim um, comes back. Uh, Kim says, um, isn't that the same guy who took credit for all those great, quote, great matches that he didn't all caps put together. So, oh man. Um, oh gosh. So Orton's like, cause I, I know that WWE like kind of audits in a sense. They're, people's Twitter, you know, for PR reasons. Um, hmm. So he says, <laughs> so he says, someone says I heard backlash would be terrible. And so he says, yeah, who said it's a week from now? You're you effing Mark. And he actually, <laughs> he actually put the word on her. So, okay. Okay. Orton. Orton's uh, got a little bit of the bitter pill going on. So, uh, yeah, very interesting from uh, Randy Orton there. Uh, he's stirring the pot for sure. So. Um, what I think about Drake Maverick getting an NXT contract. I mean, he was with, he was with NXT before, so um, great. I mean, it's it's not not a big not a big deal, honestly. Um, uh, see, Orton versus Champa. I'm not really interested in that, honestly. Um, okay, I'm not really interested in that. Um, yeah, yeah, uh, mad about super kick slapping their leg or something. Yeah, you you know that Orton, man, he's, you know, it was it him and Rip Rogers got into it, and I think him and, was it him and, um, Bolly, uh, Bubba Ray, uh, got into it too, um, yeah, I think they got into it too. So he's definitely, yeah, back in 2017. So yeah, he's he likes to stir the pot. He likes to stir the pot. All right, let's uh let's get into some flavor of the week, ladies and gentlemen. So uh let's get on that. Uh let's do this. We're gonna talk about talk about Wrestle War 89, but 
Yeah. Yeah, they did. Uh the brand supremacy match. Um which was a decent was a decent match. I did hear about the Brian Cage and Lacey Evans too. Yeah, that was that was quite interesting. Um thank you. Thank you. I forgot. So thank you. That's why it's always good to remind somebody because it was somebody because, yeah, I, I forgot. So let's actually do that. Uh, see, um, I'm sure Evan will probably message me and be like, oh, I'm sorry, man, I fell asleep. Because um, he actually gave me the idea to do Wrestle War 89. Uh, and he kept he messages me every day, every morning, to ask, ask me how I'm doing. Uh, very, very kind of him. Uh, so I don't know. He usually gives me updates of what's going on, too. Usually when I don't hear like Evan it gets like super excited to come on the show. Usually when I don't hear him, I'll, I'll get a met because I'm a night owl. And usually I'll get a message from him about one thirty in the morning. Like, oh man, I have my alarm clock on X, Y, Z. <laughs> so that's probably what happened now. Uh, he gave me the idea to do Wrestle War '89. Uh, so I'll do a little bit of what I got from it. Um, what I what I got from Wrestle War '89. So go check out Wrestle War '89 for those who are uh, those who are in the network who who have the network. Let's. Uh, Russell War 89. So let's uh, be sure to check out Russell War 89. All right. And then we'll talk about it next week in more detail. So I, I saw about the first uh, 45 minutes or so and a couple of things. Uh, so let's, let's formally do this. So without further ado, you know what time it is. Uh, flavor of the week. Let's do it. It is now time for the flavor of the week. All right. Um, I just want to. I want to put this uh, little uh, snippet on here that I got to add to my add to my collection. So uh, I think this is absolutely hilarious. So uh, I'm gonna play it. Here we go. Wow! That's my line. 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 Come on, come on. Let's do it. That's Flair's line. He's told about ten of Flair's lines. That's my line. That's my line. It's my line. One of the greatest segments in. All of TNA Impact Wrestling, one of my personal favorites. Uh, that segment was absolutely hilarious. All right, Wrestle War 89, a couple things that I noticed from it. Um, so Muda was supposed to, so so Muda was supposed to go against Junkyard Dog. Um see, I would take Nick Patrick is it's quarter to one in the morning. Nick's pa- Nick Patrick is probably asleep by now, but I wanted to I wanted to ask Nick Patrick if I if I had time I was so busy I wanted to text Nick Patrick and ask him why because he refereed that match I wanted to ask him why Junkyard Dog was promoted was tell was uh, um, even the day of the same day they were going through the list of matches and they said Junkyard Dog against the Great Muda. And then as soon and so then, then they uh, introduced Doug Gilbert, who was already in the ring, and then they had Muda come out. And then they said, you know, circumstances beyond our control, whatever, junkyard dog's not able to come. So I'm trying to think, like, where was JYD at the time? Did he go back to WWE? And I was like, no, because I know he went from Mid-South, and then, he, you know, he went. He was like booming in WWE. He was booming in Mid South. He was way over Mid South, and he went to WWE. And I'm trying to figure that did he go back around that time? Because I know in around '90 he 
was back. I know he like there were some health issues that was going on with him at that time, and he ended up getting a lot of weight. Um, but I'm like, what was going on in '89 that made them promote him and then change their mind? I mean, something happened obviously for Russell War 89 that caused him to uh, not be on the show. So I thought that was interesting. Ranger Ross. One thing I thought that was funny about Ranger Ross was his uh, Ricky Steamboat slash Great Moda style chops. His entrance was really, really funny. Uh, it was, I mean, it was like he came out with like some brigade and <laughs> it was like really interesting. I don't, I did not remember who Razor, uh, Ranger Ross was. I just, I don't remember that. Uh, so, all right. I mean, I don't even know. Is he still alive? I, I, I would love to bring him on the show. Uh, let me find out. Um, he's 60 years old. And his name is Robert Lee Ross Jr. He retired in 2006. He's 60 years old. He lives in Georgia. I'm trying to find this guy, man. Ranger Ross. He was arrested in 1996 and formally charged with bank robbery as a motorcycle bandit, an unidentified man who made his escape on a Honda motorcycle. Following the robbery of a bank of, in downtown uh, Ackworth, Ross surrendered to federal agents on February 9th. What? <laughs> he was arrested for bank robbery. <laughs> okay. Okay. I didn't, I didn't know that. I did not know that. Came back to wrestling in 2004. Uh, I started wrestling for some indies. Wow. He was arrested for bank robbery. Huh. That is really interesting. Um, try to find this dude, man. Um, see if there's any, um, Oh, wow. There's more stuff on this guy. So, yeah, so he spent, over, he spent, so he was in prison for six years. And right after, he started doing indie stuff. Wow. So he, he was in prison for six years for bank robbery. Wowzers. Hmm. Really interesting. Hmm. Okay. Well, Ranger Ross was um, in jail for six years. How about that? Very interesting. <laughs> All right. Let me find out where this guy is. <laughs> yeah, he's been gone. Uh, he's been he's been really he got released uh and started going back into the uh indie scene back in 2004 he got uh arrested in 2009 so i mean excuse me he got arrested in 1990 uh he, he got arrested in 1996 huh i did not know that it's very interesting so somebody somebody sent me a message on social media and remind me to Try to find out where Ranger Ross is. That would be very interesting. Uh, Dick Murdoch got hung. So uh, Bob Orton Jr. tried to kill him. I uh, found that interesting. That definitely won't fly nowadays. Um, hung him. Uh, dynamic, new, dy dynamic dudes in a, a Samoa SWAT team. That was quite interesting. Um, yeah. Um, Johnny Ace and Shane Douglas, another very, very cheesy gimmick that wouldn't fly nowadays, but I was a big fan of the dynamic dudes. Um, yeah, 
And it was a good match, actually. I was actually really in. I was really into the match because the Samoan SWAT team was like the heels, and the, and although the dynamic dudes were like over the top cheesy, it worked because they were going against some heels that were like heels. And Paulie dangerously was the uh, was the manager that helped him even more. So that that worked. Uh, I was actually a big fan of that. And I, I, that's all I saw. I saw Michael Hayes and Lex Luger's interview. Um, I saw both of their interviews, and I forgot that Lex Luger, when he would interview, he would he would talk like this. He would have his hand like this. You are a good wrestler, but you are no Lex Luger. And what you will do is you will go ahead and you will bow down to the total package. He would hold, he would use this as some type of buffer of nervousness or something like that when he would do his promos. Very interesting. Um, yeah. Yes, Russell War 89 is on the WWE Network. So everybody who has a WWE Network who confirmed that they have the WWE Network, watch Russell War 89. And uh, we'll talk about it uh, more in, in depth next week. Um, all right, ladies and gentlemen, PMP Nation it has been fun. Josh the Yeti Brettle on the show, <laughs> a blast from the uh, the past, uh, only a few few years ago, but uh, got him out of his out of his cave and. Got a yeti, got the yeti out of his cave, man, and brought him on the show. So, thank you, Alonzo. That is a that is a good press impression of Lex Luger. He always did point like that. It was a way to show his nervousness. But I'm going to cut this promo. Now, be sure to cut this promo, and you will get the wrath of the total package. So. <laughs> Uh, Robbie, am I rolling the small SWAT team, also known as Wild Samoans? Oh, they're two different teams. Um, no, they, they, they're two different teams. Yeah, the Wild Samoans is Alpha and Sika. Samoan SWAT team was uh, Samu and Fatu. Samu and the Samoan SWAT team were the head shrinkers. Samu and Fatu. So, uh, yes, the point. <laughs> the point. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's been fun. Uh, we got a row. Um, man, I've had Bill Dundee on the show a bunch of times. Dundee's my guy, man. Actually, I can call him. It's almost 1 o'clock in the morning. He would answer, though. Chris, how's it going, my man? This is what he'll probably say. Chris, how's it going, mate? All right, cool dude. Chris, uh, what's going on, man? How's your been, mate? It's, uh, that's that's what he would do if I called him. Uh, if I call him, so usually when I call Bill Dundee, as soon as he answers the phone, he says my name. Chris, how's it going, mate? How you doing, mate? So, cool dude. All right. Oh, thank you. See, I forgot a kid. I forgot a kid, man. Thank you, Mo. <laughs> I do want to call him, Chad. I do want to call him. I do want to call him. But he's in Tennessee. He's he, he he's he's in Tennessee. I think we still have the same. He's like 70 years old, dude. Let me like let the dude get his rest. Uh I do want to call him though. Um <laughs> I do want to call him. Um I'll call him closer to eleven one day. Uh 76. 70 he'll be 77 years old this year 77 years old wow still wrestling too isn't that crazy give us a death it before you go baby because i keep forgetting about the backlash predictions baby i keep forgetting about the winner of the greatest match ever baby if you will live in the living color i keep forgetting about these people i keep forgetting about the 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 the, the mothership 
the, the, the WWE Raw, baby. I keep forgetting about the backlash, baby. I keep forgetting about the main event, the greatest match ever between Edge and Randy Orton, the legend killer, baby. He gave me an RKO, baby. I Out of nowhere, baby. I wasn't expecting it, baby. But you know what? If you we are, I'll tell you this. Edge will beat Randy Orton, but I actually don't think that that's going to happen, baby. I think that they're going to have Randy Orton win it so just to make sure that the rubber match, if you will, be sure to have the rubber match on the next pay-per-view between Edge and the legend killer Randy Orton, if you will. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Alonzo. Thank you, Chad. Uh yes. Uh you know, I've actually thought about that, man. I've actually thought about that, Mo. I ha- I have a lot of wrestlers' numbers, like a lot. Um, dozens. And I actually thought about that. Uh Josh just um texted me back and said thanks. Um so big thanks to Josh. Um, all right. So, all right. So let's yeah let's let's hurry up and do this. This uh, daggone greatest show backlash predictions real quick. Okay. So backlash. I was supposed to be doing some. Um, you know. Leo Rush, uh, I've actually texted him back and forth. I, I probably won't be bringing Leo Rush in my show. Um, yeah, very interesting. All right, so let's do some predictions. Beforehand, um, let's do a backlash. I got all this backlash trivia. We only got a few minutes left. So let's do this one. Who did Randy Orton defeat in a hardcore match to retain the Intercontinental title at Backlash 2004? Who did Randy Orton defeat in a hardcore match to retain the IC title at Backlash 2004? Let's do that one real quick. Uh, No, I've not interviewed MVP, but I talked to him in detail. Uh... Uh, in Orlando or New Orleans, WrestleMania. We talked for a long time, actually. Pretty, pretty cool dude. I actually have a picture of MVP and I, um, chatting. I took a picture of us, uh, hanging out together and chatting. Uh, I'm gonna. There you go. Just had a long uh, April 7, 2018. <clears throat> Just had a long, awesome combo with MVP about life and wrestling. Cool dude. Yeah. Good, good combo we had with MVP and I. All right. <clears throat> um, all right. Um, yeah, pretty much, pretty much, Brian. That's how I feel. Someone wins, someone lose. I, I really don't care. I just, just don't care. All right, so let's do this real quick. Backlash. Um, um Foley, yes. Good job, Alonzo. Mo, Cactus Jack. Yep, same person. Good job. All right, Backlash. Uh, let's see, real quick. Uh, Apollo Cruz and Andrade. I think Apollo will win. Uh, oh, yeah, Raw. Raw was decent. Probably. C plus SmackDown was this. Uh, no C solid C for all C plus for 
for SmackDown. The Bailey and Sasha being uh, champ again was uh, interesting. Yes, Aaron Foley is the correct answer. Um, welcome, Aaron, to the show, by the way. Newbie, newbie to the show. Welcome to the PMP Nation. All right. Uh, the Apollo Cruz. I think he's going to win. Um, I don't know. Uh, Bailey and Sasha Banks. It's interesting that they're giving Bailey two titles again. Like, uh, well, not not again, but some won two titles again. So, yeah. I think that. I think Bailey and Sasha keep it. I think this eventually leads to one of them turning face. It's clear that one of them is going to turn on the, um, on the other. Hardy and Sheamus. Uh, I think Sheamus is going to win because I think Hardy is going to be interrupted by Sami Zayn. Um. Oscar and Nia Jax, I say Oscar. They're I can see them keeping on Oscar for a while, which is a good thing. Braun Strowman against the Miz and Morrison is definitely a filler. Um, definitely a filler match. Strowman. Uh, McIntyre and Lashley. McIntyre. Maybe Lana have something to do with that. And then I think Orton to be Edge. I think we're going to be edge. Yeah, I think so. I think that's what we'll see. Uh, all right, guys. Uh, real quick, Mo is asking, what do I think about woman main event takeover pay-per-view and raw main event also? Yeah, I don't. I mean, I don't mind woman, woman main eventing if they're a draw. I just don't think the women that they have are a big draw. I mean, I wasn't a big fan of just kind of giving, you know, the main event to the woman. Uh, at, at Mania last year, I, I wasn't a fan of that. Um, I think if you draw, you draw. I would have been a big fan. I've said this before. I think if Oscar was still undefeated and Ronda Rousey was still, you know, the baddest woman on the planet, I would have been totally fine with undefeated streak versus title. Ronda, Ronda's the heel, Oscar's the face, streak versus title. And I think that would have been a great main event. I would have been totally fine with that. So, all right, ladies and gentlemen, it has been a pleasure. One hundred and uh, four hundred and twenty-eight episodes in the book. Again, thanks to John Spreto, the Yeti, for coming out of his cave uh, after a four-year wrestling hiatus to talk about some wrestling. So it was interesting. He seemed like he was a little, uh, you know. <laughs> so uh but it was fun i had a good time talking to him all right ladies and gentlemen uh until next week enjoy your week of wrestling god bless and always remember i do it for you have a good night everybody peace <laughs>